Hello, hello. It's your girl, Coach Lakeisha. It's a new month, July 3rd. Can you guys believe it's July 3rd already? We are into the seventh month of the year. Seems like it was just yesterday that we were doing our New Year's resolutions, right? When I have a message, I always get these revelations, y'all, when I'm in the shower. Like, I um, had this revelation, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, you know what? This would be something good to talk about on Facebook because a lot of times, you know, we try to get people to stay when it's their time to exit stage left. Oh, that's right. Exit stage left. It's time for them to leave, but we want them to stay. So I just wanted to come and remind you, oh yeah, thank y'all for the birthday wishes, July birthday girl, two days away from my birthday. I'm in a resort doing some R&R. &R. Hey, hey, everybody who is saying hi to me. Thank you so much uh, for chiming in. And shit is live because this is not about a product. This is not about business. This is about you getting your life together. And when a person gets what gets what they come for, we have to let them go. When they get what they come for, let them go. Matter of fact, when they get ready to walk out the door, grab the door so it don't hit them in the back. Don't let the doorknob hit them with the good Lord split them. Grab the door and just say, okay, Babu, see you later. Uh-huh. Do that because... People, um, and y'all know, I don't even, I, I might mess it up, but people come for a reason, a season, and a, what else? What, what's the other one? What's the third one? They come for a reason, a season, and a, see, I already messed that up, but y'all get where I'm going with this, right? People come into your life for a reason, a season, and what? what's the third one? But however, when it's time for them to go, when they get what they need, it's time for them to go. That's just like me, for instance. I'm a nurse, right? And um, I went to nursing school. Why would I stay in nursing school after I got my degree? Why would I stay in nursing school? Number one, Sally May hit me in the head with an $800, $800 payment. But no, that wasn't what I came to talk about. But why would I stay in nursing school after I get what I came for? I got my degree. That's what I came for. Peace out. Like they'll be looking at me like I'm stupid or you know, special if I try to stay in college when I got my degree. So, um, prime example, if a person, you know, came to me and said, look, Keisha, I want to lose 100 pounds, and they lose that 100 pounds, I'll be crazy trying to get them to stay and still take weight loss products when they don't reach their goal. When they get what they came for, you let them go. Okay, so, um, I was just thinking about a couple of different things while I, like I said, while I was in the shower, I was thinking about a couple of different things. And the biggest thing that I was thinking about, we try to hold on to things and we block our own blessings. Sometimes we block our blessings because people who need to move out of the way, we try to hold on to them. We like, oh, don't go, boo. Don't leave me. Don't go. Like, for real? You could have already been to the level that God wants you to be on, but you try to hold on to something that wasn't yours. You try to stay in a place that you don't need to go to, to stay in. If you got what you came for, bye. Well wishes. Again, why would my college professor say, you know what, Lakeisha, you've earned your bachelor's degree in nursing, but we want you to stay. I'd be like, y'all going to pay this tuition? Y'all going to pay Sally Mae? And I'm going to give you a prime example of what I'm talking about. Like, sometimes when people get what they want, when they get what they came for, they are ready to leave, but we can't let them go. So I'm here to encourage you to let people go. Oh, let me put on my glasses so I can see y'all. <laughs> Where my glasses at? Okay. Yeah. So let me put on my glasses, y'all. I got to embrace these glasses because for real... I have had these glasses for a number of years, but the more I try to not wear them, I'm like squinting and stuff. I'm like, you know what? Fool, get your life. Wear them doggone glasses that you paid for, right? So, but anyway, yeah. So back to the to, to the lesson. And I'm gonna just drop this little quick little story. It's a testament, a testimony about my life, right? 
And I can't tell you something if I haven't been through it. But it's just like back in 2007, okay? I experienced some stuff that most people won't experience in their whole lifetime. I experienced it in 45 days. Mm -hmm. I was evicted. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing that I'm proud of. Transparent moment, real talk, real truth. I was evicted. And then I had a car that was repossessed. Yeah, when I came, y'all know I love travel. And we're talking about 2007. I didn't just start traveling in 2017. I started traveling. I've been traveling all my life. But I went to Chicago and I got back to the airport. I mean, got back from the airport, took the MARTA back to where I had parked my car at the MARTA station. Got back to the MARTA station. My car was gone. So I was with the little remote. I was like, bleak, 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 bleak. I knew what floor I parked on. But I said, you know what? Maybe, Lakeisha, you didn't park on this floor. Maybe you need to take the escalator, or the e not the escalator, the elevator down to the next floor. Maybe you need to go to the next floor. Maybe you need to go to the next floor. I went to all the floors, y'all. It was like seven levels. And I went on every level knowing good and godly well that I did not park on those levels. But I did not want to embrace and face the fact that I had... My car was gone. So I get on the phone with the guy at the, at, the, at the little box, and I was like, somebody stole my car. Somebody stole my car. And he was like, ma'am, calm down. What kind of car was it? I told him, I said, it's a brand new car. It's a, you know, a, a, a royal blue. And I described the car. He said, ma'am, the repo man came and got that car. I was like, repo man? I said, no, no, no. The repo man didn't come and get my car. Because my car payment, in my mind, I'm thinking my car payment is only 31 days late. Like, I ain't missed but the one month. 31 days, not 91 days. It's 31 days late. So, ain't no way that my car is repossessed. Okay. Okay. True story, y'all. Mm -hmm. I called a company. I said, hey, they told me that my car is in uh, repossession. I called a guy that left the car at the window and say, yeah, we took, we pick up your car because at midnight on day number 31, your car is late and it's going to cost you $1,800 to get it out of repossession. I was like, wait a minute, but I don't owe $1,800. He said, I know you don't, but we got to pay the repo man. You got to pay the month that you do. You got to pay the next month because we don't know, you know, is that month is overdue. So you got to pay this month and you got to pay another month. I'm like, where they do that at? So I said all that to say this. My car got repossessed. Yeah, it was hard. It was tough. Like, how do you call your friend and say, I just got off a flight going to so-and-so, coming from so-and-so, and my car got repossessed. So I called my friend Ray. Real story, true story. Called my friend Ray. I said, Ray, hey, you know what? My car got repossessed. I need you to pick. I ain't telling him about the car got repossessed. I said, I need you to pick me up on Buford Highway. He said, okay, I'm coming right there. Called the repo guy. said, hey, what will it take for me to get my stuff out of this car? Because I need my stuff, but I'm not going to pay these guys $1,800 to keep this car. And then next month, if stuff happened and I'm stuck in between a rock and a hard place, they're going to come and pull my car again at midnight. Because if I knew that my car was going to be repossessed, number one, I wouldn't have left it parked on Buford Highway at the Marta Station. I would have parked it probably in somebody's garage. But I had no idea that my car was going to be repo doggone zest. Okay? So, moving forward, I worked that out. I was evicted. Now I got my car repossessed. So, I found, went back to the previous place that I lived. I said, this is how much money I got. How, what is it going to take me to get back into this place? Got back into that place. Then, I talked to one of my friends on the phone. And I said, you know what? They took my car. And she was like, oh, girl, I got you. My old car is out there. You can drive it. But it was a Suburban, y'all. And we talking about 2007 when the gas price was almost $4 a gallon. I'm like, who the hell could put gas in a Suburban <laughs> at this price? True story. Um, so at that point, 
in all my pain and all my angst and all my anguish, I was like, I couldn't be mad with God because these were the choices that I made. This was the decision that I made being an LPN for 17 years, not finishing nursing school. That wasn't God's fault that I didn't finish nursing school. That wasn't God's fault that I didn't do what I had to do to set myself up financially so that I wouldn't be in a crunch. Okay, that was my fault. So it was all due to the, the, the choices that I made pretty much the previous three years. So now we're talking about a repossession. Now we're talking about a car. Uh, we're talking about eviction. Then we're talking about a car repossessed. My friend was there for me. She was like, hey, I got you. Got her car. Finally, I went to a buy here, pay here lot. Anybody, y'all might not know. None of my Facebook friends don't know nothing about no buy here, pay here. Real talk, 17 years as a nurse, going to a buy here, pay here lot, told a guy, I said, look, I need a car. I need a car. All I got is $500. Because remember, I just got evicted. So I got to pay first month and last month in a new place. The eviction haven't came through yet. So I was still in the safe zone of getting a new place at that point. So I went to this place, paid the first month, last month, and then I had $500 left to my name. I was an LPN in Atlanta, Georgia. LPN in Atlanta, Georgia. And every night that I went to bed, well, every day that I went to bed, waking up, thinking that I was going to get to go to work, and they found a CNA or they found an RN. So me as an LPN did not have work. In five months, I worked seven shifts. Can you imagine your life? What would your life be like financially in five months if you only work seven days out of five months? So the money that I made and saved in Dallas, Texas was gone. It was gone. I made a great income in Dallas as an LPN, $33 an hour, and I was able to work as much overtime as I could possibly work. I worked. I worked, y'all. But when you don't have money coming in and you got bills going out, what do you do? Okay? I'm about to get to the end of this story, y'all. But my whole point for telling you guys this story and me being transparent and you letting you, me letting you know, you know, my whole point for telling you this story is sometimes... God puts you in the position because you don't listen. So I am eternally grateful to God and thankful to God that he put me in that position. I was working as an LPN, making 30 something dollars an hour. You know, I was like, why I got to go to RN school? I'm straight. I wasn't straight, but I'm straight. Why I got to go to RN school? Why? Why? Why do I have to go to RN school when I'm making RN pay? I'm from Selma, Alabama. Don't none of the nurses that I know make $33 an hour. We're talking about over 10 years ago, right? So fast forward. God had to break me down. God had to take me to a place like the lowest of the low. Let me finish this story. I went to that buy here, pay here lot. I told him I got $500. They told me, well, we can let you get the car, but you need to have at least $1,500. So I said, okay, can I post date you a check? I know none of my friends don't know nothing about no buy here, pay here lots. But at that buy here, pay here lot, I gave them $500 cash. I gave them two post dated checks for $500. I just paid. To get into a new place to live. Because I had to have a roof over my head. So I went on. Trying not to get emotional about this story. But it's bringing me right back there. But anyway. The guy called me. He said hey. Miss Trusty. I was Miss Trusty at that time. Miss Trusty. You still owe us for this car. And the check bounced. And I was like okay. I said can you give me some time. Can you give me a few mm -hmm. days? Go to bed, wake up, get canceled. Go to bed, wake up, get canceled. Go to bed, wake up, get canceled. If you don't have money coming in and you got money going out, it ain't adding up. So the next time I said, you know what? I can swipe to the left or swipe to the right and ignore these calls. It don't matter. They still coming through. 
The calls are still coming through. I may as well face the music and face the magic. And I told him, I said, sir, he said, Miss Hawk, Miss Trusty, we need you to bring back our car because if you can't pay for it, you can't continue to drive it. I said, well, I tell you what, sir, this is the address. Come and pick up the car. He said, can you bring the car back? I said, no, I can't bring the car back because I ain't got nobody to pick me up. I cannot bring the car back. Here's the, um, I'll leave the keys in the car. Here's the car. Here's the new address because I got evicted from the place where I was when I got the car. So here we go. So I told him where to come and pick up the car. He came to pick up the car. So now that's two cars repossessed and an eviction in 45 days. Can everybody raise their hand if that ever happened to them? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay? I don't think so. But that was God's way of getting my attention. So I still say thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to get evicted, for allowing two cars to get repossessed. I had a brand new car. The car barely had 600 miles on it when it got repossessed. I doubt it, seriously, if it had a thousand miles on it. A brand spanking new car that had six miles on it when I drove it off the lot. The car was 31 days behind when they repossessed it. But that drove me to my newest level, my newest height. That drove me to go to school, get your mind right, do what you gotta do to get your RN degree. So that, my friends, is how I ended up with the RN degree. That's the only way that I ended up with an RN degree because I was comfortable. Mm -hmm. I settled, okay? I settled for where I was. So sometimes, again, you could block your blessing. You could block your blessing because you're trying to hold on to what ain't yours. You're trying to hold on to people that should be out of your life. You're trying to hold on to jobs that's keeping you bound. You're trying to hold on to situations that you need to let go. I needed to let go that I was an LP and I was making good money. I was traveling where I was doing whatever the heck I wanted to do. But that wasn't what God had for me. But because I was stuck. I was stuck in my own way. I was stuck in my own ways. And I thought that I was doing good. God had to break me down to the lowest level in order for me to see that he wanted to reach me to push me to new heights. So I'm just reminding you all today that you need to be broke down sometime in order to elevate to where God has you to go. Okay? And you need to let go of the people who God wants you to let go of. But we, oh, I need to hold on to my boo. I need to hold on to my friend. I need to hold on to my job. I need to hold on to what's got me comfortable. I need to hold on to what's got me stuck. When God want to bless you, but you blocking your blessings, boo, because you sitting there thinking that everything should come in a certain package. You sitting there thinking that everything needs to be a certain way in order for it to line up. Well, I'm telling you, when people come for what it is that they need to get and they get it, let them go. Wish them well. Farewell, my good and faithful servant, my friend, my whoever, my whatever. Catch the door and don't let it hit them in the back. Don't let it hit them in the back because if it hit them in the back or it hit them in the butt, they're going to look back and they might want to come back. No, you let them go. You let them go so that you can now move forward in your life. You can now move forward in the blessings that God has for you. That's all. That's all. Because I would not be an RN today if I had been still there. If I had been getting work, I would have never got evicted. If I had been getting work, I would have never lost my two cars in 45 days and I would still be in that same spot instead of me being 17 years as an um, LPM I would now be about 24, um, 25 years as an LPN. so I'm just reminding everybody today as I close look that sounds like a preacher don't hey I ain't trying to preach y'all but seriously we have to let people go we have to let things go 
When it serves its purpose, let it go. When they came into your life and they fulfill whatever it is, if they came to get something, they got it from you, that's good. Bless them and let them go. Bless that thing and let it go so that you can move forward with your life. Because it's so much more that you have to do that you bound yourself with, that you are binding down, that you won't let rise up out of you because you're in a stuck place you in a stuck place you know you stuck because you are just selling mm -hmm. and you think that that's what you're supposed to have you think that's that's what you're supposed to be doing but that's not it you got so much more that has been predestined to your life you have so many lives that you need to change. You have so many people who need your help. You have so many people that you can't bless because you ain't blessing yourself. Because you holding on to that stuff. Thank y'all for the birthday wishes. Thank y'all for the comments. I'm going to go back and look to the look at the comments and comment on the comments. But I just had to share that because as I was in the shower, that was just on my heart. I'm like, why is it that we hold on to stuff that don't belong to us? <laughs> because if it belonged to you, it wouldn't be trying to leave. I'm going to look over the glasses for this one. <laughs> If it was yours, it would be yours. You wouldn't have to fight for it. You wouldn't have to struggle for it. You wouldn't have to be, oh, please don't go. Please don't leave. I like you. Stay here. It's a comfort zone. Get out your comfort zone. Stop worrying about the things that you fear. Do it afraid. I'm not saying don't be fearful. Yeah, I am saying don't be fearful. Even when you're fearful, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it afraid. You might think... Well, I don't know if I could finish school. I don't know if, you know, I could lose the 30 pounds. I don't know. I'm afraid. I love food. I love birthday cake. My birthday is two days away. Yeah, I'm going to eat a piece of cake because that's the uh, that's the way. Like, I love cake, y'all. I used to buy birthday cake when it wasn't nobody's birthday that I knew. But it was somebody's birthday. So I was like, ooh, I'm about to get this cake. I'm about to eat this cake. No, seriously. You got to do whatever it is and do it afraid. And just know that somebody is looking for you to do it in order to know that they can do it. With that being said, guys, I got to get out here. I got to be celebrating. It's time for me to turn up. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Hey, it's my birthday. <laughs> yep, July girl, y'all. So I'm going to see you guys on the flip side. Seriously, let that thing go. Let those people go. Let that situation go so that you can be blessed. So that you can move forward in your life for whatever that is. For you and your family. For you and your children. For you and those people that you care the most for. I'm going to see you guys later. Talk to you later. Oh, y'all know I'm going to be going live again because it's my birthday. Hey, it's my birthday. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Bye.